And number 32, O.J. Simpson, unbeaten Buffalo Bills. The only man ever to have gained more than 2,000 yards in a single NFL season. He appears bent using those talents upon breaking more records. Should he gain more than 200 yards tonight, he will have surpassed even Jimmy Brown in the number of times he has gained 200 yards or more in a given game. Look at the quickness of the acceleration, the instancy of change of speed. Tonight, he'll be using those talents against the Giants. But there have been hints of early retirement. I asked him about them. Honest, Howard, I, I really don't know. I, uh, the way I feel, though, is uh, there are certain opportunities outside of football that I can't, uh, I, I, I just can't overlook too, too many more years, you know. I came into the league, I thought the world was mine. I had a few bad years, and I realized then that, hey, you know, you're hot when you're hot. So there's opportunities that have come to me with ABC, with the movies that I would like to uh, take advantage of. And uh, uh, the only thing I want to do right now is play, the, get the best possible year I can. So if I do retire, I, I will feel that I gave it my all, and I, you know, I went out uh, the best. That's your own meretricious way of saying you want my job. Well, you got to explain meretricious to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does Monday night football still stir you up? Uh, yeah, I think it stirs every player in the league up. Uh, uh, you know, all your friends, my mother is watching, my kids in L.A. is watching, Marguerite's watching, all my friends are watching. More important, the guys I got to play later on in the uh, season are watching. Everybody in the game is watching. So it's like center stage, and when you're on center stage, you know, you want to do your best. You want to show your best. And we know you're up there. You're up there with Karis telling everybody that the old fellas are better than us young fellas. And you were waiting for us to make a mistake to jump on a different. We trust you, Gifford. We know you're going to tell it like it is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think I think Monday night is a little special. Uh, all our guys feel it's a little special. We, we, uh, we're we undefeated on Monday night. We plan to keep it that way. What about the Giants? Uh, we looked at the Giants. You know, they, they have some talent on the team. It just looked like they haven't put it all together again. Uh, 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 we saw this past week on film some teams move the ball pretty good against them. Washington did, and a few other teams moved on them, but they didn't score a whole lot of points on them. But uh, there's things we think we can do to them. We think we can take advantage of the fact that they don't have that much experience playing together on defense, and it sort of shows, so hopefully uh, we can take advantage of that tonight. They'll be keying on you all night. You're at 697. Could you reach 1,000 tonight? Uh, anything could happen, but I, I kind of think they're going to try to be particularly tough against our running game. I saw where uh, I think a guy named Gregory was saying, no, uh, Gallagher was saying that they did a good job on me last year when he was at uh, Chicago, and I saw Lockhart say that, you know, they feel they could stop me. So I think they're going to do some special team things to try to stop our running game. And if they do, Joe Ferguson is going to have a uh, tremendous night. <laughs> Stand by on the camera. Stand by videotape. Stand by slow-mo. And when roll video tape is time. And roll tape. Four, three, two, one. Take tape. Take tape. From Ritz Stadium in Buffalo, New York. Tonight, 80,000 fans will be on hand on a damp, cool, breezy evening. And they'll be watching the undefeated Buffalo Bills of the AFC East with their incomparable running back, O.J. Simpson, against the New York Giants of the NFC East. And ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is brought to you by Goodyear, the makers of the polysteel radial tire. It keeps its feet even in the rain. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. Frank Gifford is exactly right. It's a nippy night here in Buffalo, but we look forward to the unbeaten Bills and O.J. against the Giants and the special defenses they may have sought to prepare for the juice tonight. Under any circumstances, a quick look at the two coaches, two of the lesser-known coaches, I suspect, in the National Football League. First, Lou Saban, Buffalo Bill. Been around a long time. Built a dynasty here in the days of the old American Football League. Moved back to the college ranks at Maryland, then back to the pros with Denver, then back here again. The one thing Lou Saban does that one respects is he adjusts himself to the kind of material he has. 
O.J. Simpson was a self-doubter, was going nowhere under his predecessor coach. Under Saban, he's back to running again, not being wasted as a wide receiver, and All-America knows the result. Bill Onsbarger, well, he became the head coach just a year ago. This is his second year. But you talked to the key members of that no-name Dolphin defense when the Dolphins were perhaps as good a team as has yet been put together in professional football. Ask the likes of Bonaconti, Cole, Swift, Dick Anderson, Jake Scott. They'll tell you about Bill Onsbarger. He is a meticulous coach, a good organizer, and defense is his cradle. In that vein, probably he considers the key pass tonight the stoppage of O.J. Simpson. In that vein, let's bring in my colleague, Corpulent Harris. That is the key, uh, the key word, and that's to stop O.J. Simpson. I agree with you on that. I don't like him too well. He makes too much money, Howard. But I'll say this about O.J. Simpson. I don't really believe you can key on any ball player. I don't care if it's O.J. Simpson, Jim Brown, Hugh McElhaney. I know we've tried to think about keying on different people in around the league when I was playing, and it's impossible to do that because as we well know in Buffalo, they have a great quarterback in Ferguson. They have some great receivers. And if you're going to key all 11 eyes on O.J. Simpson, then you're going to find out that they're going to be throwing that ball around and scoring all kinds of touchdowns. So that's, I think that's a fallacy. I don't think you can key. I know that you can say to yourself going in that you're going to have to really worry about that running game with Simpson and Boston, but I don't think you can key on O.J. Simpson. I think you have to really try and concentrate on that running game and try to cut it off. But... I don't believe in that team situation. Okay. I don't think the coach will do that. You threw out some pretty good names. Jim Brown, you left out Gail Says, let's add him. Hugh McElhinney, you left out Jim Taylor, let's add him. How does Simpson stack up in your view since you believe in the older players with these names I've mentioned? Well, I think without a doubt he's as good as any of them that I mentioned and that you mentioned, but I, I don't think that... Uh, I, I'm, I'm one in statistics, and I, I still think that uh, Jimmy Brown is the greatest football player I've ever seen play football. You're entitled, and you're bound to stir some controversy with that, but Jim Brown is looking at you and clapping his hands right now. Hi, Jim. Let's, <laughs> let's bring in the man that the Jews trust. The gift. I'd like to have both of them the same team. <laughs> you know, when you start, think about stopping O.J., what you really need is quick pursuit. And the Giants, whereas they maybe are not the strongest defensive team around, they have some young players that are fast. Dave Gallagher at defensive end, and they have uh, Jack Gregory, an all-pro in his own right for many years. And they have a guy named John Mendenhall, number 64, in the middle of the line, who, if the Giants are going to slow O.J. Simpson down tonight, because they're not going to stop him, John's going to have to have a big night. He's like Alex Karras in a way, 6'1", 255 pounds and as quick as a cat. If they do have success against O.J., well, then they have a fine quarterback in Joe Ferguson. Last week against Baltimore, he had his best ever as a professional, 14 of 26, two touchdowns. So it's not just O.J. Simpson that fires up the Buffalo Bills. For the Giants, they are depending upon Craig Morton. They got him last year, a great quarterback who came up to the Cowboys in 65. He played behind Meredith. Later, he played behind Roger Staubach, and now he is the Giants quarterback. He has a good arm. But still, he has yet to prove that he is the kind of quarterback to be compared with the all-time greats. And we'll be ready for the kickoff between the New York Giants and the Buffalo Bills right after this. There's excitement in Buffalo, New York tonight. The undefeated Buffalo Bills go against the New York Giants. And we will say at the top, as we already have, the man we are watching tonight is one of the great athletes of all time. Many say the greatest runner who ever carried the football, his name is O.J. We'll see him early, and there he is right now on the sidelines because the New York Giants will be kicking off to the Buffalo Bills. O.J. Simpson with 697 yards rushing, and here's George Hunt setting it up for New York. Deep is Gary Heyman, number 21, and back there with him, Vic Washington, 33. Vic Washington acquired in the offseason by Buffalo from Houston. He had great years at San Francisco, a good kick return artist. And it will be Washington at his own eight. Washington hurdles over the 30, up to the 32-yard line, a gain of 23 by Washington. And opening on offense will be quarterback Joe Ferguson. He will be wearing number 12, had his biggest day last week. He'll be in there with his two setbacks, the big man, number 34, Jim Braxton, number 32, O.J. Simpson. The wide receivers, speedster, J.D. Hill, number 40, he can fly. Bob Chandler is back from an injury, number 81. And the tight ends are 87. Paul Seymour, Ruben Gant, 88. There is your offensive line, an exceptional offensive line. The Bills, with first possession, they move from their own 31-yard line. Run, 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 run. 
O.J. with the first call. Big hole. Five yards up to the 36-yard line. Stopped by Carl Lockhart. And O.J. Simpson moved right through the defensive front four of the Giants. Frank, here's that uh, big defensive line. And I say big because I don't think they're that big, but they're a very quick defensive line. Dave Gallagher, Jim Peterzak, John Mendelhall, who uh, Frank has talked about. He's got great quickness. He's only a six-foot-one, but he's quick. The linebackers, Pat Hughes, Brian Kelly, Brad Van Pelt. Not big names, although Van Pelt looked that way at college. All questionable, Frank. Second down and five. O.J. now over 700 yards for the season. Almost unbelievable. Here he is again. Back to the line of scrimmage. This time he's piled up as Bobby Brooks come up from the defensive cornerback position, number 37, and turned O.J. to the inside. All right. Jim Steinke should be back there. The key man is always number 43, the veteran uh, free safety, Spider Lockhart. Oh, Robbie Brooks is in there, yes, indeed. Henry Stuckey, number 48, perhaps the most resplendent sartorialist in the National Football League is in there. And right now, just short of the 37, third down, a long three. It would be a passing down for most, most teams, but most teams do not have a Simpson. Ferguson to the air. Looking, firing out to J.D. Hill. And J.D. Hill makes the first completion for Ferguson tonight, an 11-yard effort, first and 10 Buffalo. Folks, the thing to remember about this Buffalo team, and they established it right from the first game of the season against the Jets right on, and particularly against the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're a team that can love and enjoy and execute ball control. The punishing ground game certifies that, but as we've pointed out, the buttressing effect of Ferguson further certifies. The ball just short of the 47. First down, Buffalo. Braxton gets the call over the left side. The big man keeps his feet in the giant territory at the 47-yard line. And this is the underrated man that puts a lot of spark in the juice. And there he is, Jim Braxton. He's limping a little bit. That's exactly true, Giff, and you'll be seeing a lot of Braxton. He started to come out of his own volition, but went back in, limping a little, as Frank said. But Braxton is a very strong ball carrier. Now he comes out, out of West Virginia. If he's got a problem, it's like Terry Metcalf. He will fumble the ball too often. But he is a strong runner, and they will use him on misdirection plays. Vic Washington, number 33, had his great years with the 49ers. Played at Houston last year in the lineup now in place of Braxton. He gets the call. And very close to the first down. Clyde Powers on the 39 up there to hit Vic Washington. Washington inside the 45. I believe we'll have a measurement. And there's a look at Braxton then. He would be quite a loss. Howard talked about his running ability, but he is also a tremendous blocker for O.J. Simpson. He scored seven touchdowns this year. He's averaging almost five yards a carry. As you see, <laughs> the bills are short. But he would be a loss. When the line pole temporarily moved the football, the Buffalo fans were slightly <laughs> chagrined and manifested it with an outburst vocally. They, <laughs> they also made a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> and they have some wild signs up here in Buffalo tonight. It's a happening. 80,000 fans have turned out. You put the punch in the program. We're going to talk about Mongo later because that's just one of his roles as an actor. The ball just short of the Giants' 43-yard line. Third down. You saw how much. Simpson. And as he does so well, perhaps better than anyone, he turns the body sideways, knights through, gets the first down, and receives the plaudits of the 80,000. Just got a report, Gift, that Braxton, number 34, has a hyperextended right knee. Now, whether or not that'll keep him out of the rest of the game, you're looking at him there, uh, remains to be seen. It may not keep him out of the game, but you can believe he'll be a very sore fullback tomorrow. Well, he leads the AFC right now in scoring, Braxton does. On the first down, Buffalo. Inside the Giants' 42-yard line. Simpson with a quick toss. Good block by Washington in front of Simpson, but... Good defensive coverage. Coming up there quickly again, Bobby Brooks. Go open a left cornerback, replacing Jim Steinke, who had been there for the Giants. If this game runs according to form, you will see Simpson frequently behind his pet blockers, the running, pulling guards, 
who are a throwback, really, to Thurston and Kramer of the pack when they're in their prime. Look at those figures on the juice. 697 yards. He's ahead alone in rushing. Of all of those other teams that you are seeing listed there in team rushing, some evidence of the remarkable statistics of this man. Geffer, that, of course, through four games. He'll add to that tonight. He already has on second down and 10. Ferguson back and looking for Hill. Overthrows his wide receiver, Tendler, who had crossed over from the left side. He had him wide open on that particular play, didn't he, Greg? Well, that's the point I tried to make earlier, is the fact that uh, you really can't key O.J. Simpson because Ferguson is going to throw the ball now on second down. I don't think two years ago he would have done it, but he's confident now. He's poised, and Saban lets him go now. I was about to say, and Frank studied the films closely this week, in watching the juice, if we go according to form tonight, you'll see him behind Delamalaya and Reggie McKenzie. And you'll see him use his block as often as a screen and then see him read the defense, sidle along the line of scrimmage, and then pick the hole in first throw. On third down and 10, Gant and Seymour, the tight ends, alternating. They're calling plays. A draw to Simpson. Watch out. There you go. Simpson gets the first down and just about broke it off completely. A 15-yard game. John Mendenhall was there to make the tackle in pursuit along with Brian Kelly, the middle linebacker of New York. This is the kind of call you can make when you've got a Simpson. Now, did you see him read there and then burst to the outside? The quick acceleration, cutting back in, and assuredly the first down yardage he needed. Runs like Gifford used to, only with some speed. Oh, he'd need a coffee break to cover it the same amount of time as I do. <laughs> Inside the 30, and Braxton is back in the ball game. Big number 34, he had a slight hyperextension of his knee. He's back in as the Bills are threatening. 10-49, they've had control from the... Opening gun. Simpson looking, dodging, weaving, and he just terrorizes blockers okay, coming up with that sort of weaving motion. Spider Lockhart doesn't look 100%. Carl Lockhart, the Giants' free safety on the Giants' bench, being attended to. Been a great veteran through the years. Not what once he was, but that's inevitable. Seinke, number 20, moves in at safety for the Giants, replacing Lockhart. It's second down and eight. The ball just short of the 25-yard line of New York. Braxton inside the 25. And we'll watch him closely because he has already been out with a slightly injured knee. Hit there by Pat Hughes, number 56. Pat Hughes for the Giants. Did not work out all week. He has a sore knee. Now, I talked about Buffalo as a ball control team. The clock has run down to 9.46 left in the first quarter and is counting down. And the Giants have yet to get after the kickoff the possession of the football. That was their 12th offensive play, Howard. And now Ferguson looks over a third down and six. The ball inside the 25 at the 24. Chandler, 81. Hill, 40. The wide receivers. And Ferguson with a quick release. Goes to Braxton. I think he did have possession. And Braxton had possession, fumbled the ball. The Giants come up with it. Fans are booing. They'd like it to have been called an incomplete pass, but it was not. Braxton had possession and control. And I remarked earlier that if he's got a problem, it's holding on to the football. Quick he release made, here, Howard. Right. You saw him have possession, and he gave it up. He made the key fumble in our opening game on Monday Night Football a year ago that suddenly retrieved the lead for Oakland, with Buffalo coming on to win in the final seconds on a brilliant drive engineered by Ferguson, culminating with a touchdown pass to Rashad. Brian Kelly made the stop for New York, causing the fumble. Brooks made the recovery. The Giants have possession. This is Craig Morton. And Morton hands off to Doug Coder. Set back in there with Joe Dawkins, Coder 44, Dawkins 26. The quarterback, as we told you, Craig Morton, an 11 year veteran. The wide receivers, Walker Gillette, number 84, number 82, Ray Rose on the opposite side of the field, but they will flip flop. The tight end, an all pro, Bob Tucker, number 38. There's the offensive line. The questionable man there, Doug Van Horn. He has a very sore calf. He was not expecting play on second down. Coder gets the call. Coder around the right side, spinning and twisting. He's out over the 15 to the 17-yard line. Coder was a valuable, valuable pickup a year ago from the Pittsburgh Steelers. He couldn't make that team. 
but he's done effective work for the Giants. The big disappointment for the Giants offensively, of course, being Ron Johnson. Ron Johnson, of course, a multiple thousand yard gainer for the Giants, has not been the been producing for the past couple of years. He doesn't know why himself as we look at head coach Bill Arnsparger. He says, I don't know. I feel better. It's just not coming to me. On third down, a long three. Morton firing quickly. Going to Ray Rhodes. Ray Rhodes taken out of bounds. And Ray Rhodes picks up a first giant first down as Morton gets his first completion. And you know, Frank, their, their weakness has always been that defensive uh, uh, defensive backs. And of course, these guys in front, Jeff Waynans, Mike Kadish, Earl Edwards, who's the senior of all the ball players up front, and Pat Toomey, they have to get to that pass a little faster. They got to help out that secondary. All right, the first down for New York. At the 23-yard line, Coder gets the call again over the right side, blocking out in front. Squeezes out about three yards. John Scorpion, the left side linebacker, number 55, was there. Frank mentioned that Scorpion was the left side linebacker. Forget the giant linebackers. It's the Buffalo defense on the field. Scorpion of Penn State, one of the many, is back there, along with Merv Krokaw from Iowa State and Bo Cornell, the veteran from Washington, who started as a running back but was shifted to the linebacker position. If the Buffalo defense has a key weakness, it's in lineback. He hit it right on the head. Baltimore hurt them last week extensively and often with passing against linebackers. Getting the call is Dawkins. Used to play with the Buffalo Bills. Came to the Giants last year, hit by Earl Edwards. Flag went down. There may be an offside call against Buffalo. There are those linebackers properly placed now, the Buffalo linebackers. As for the Buffalo secondary, another potential weakness, the season-long loss of Robert James, the brilliant all-pro quarterback, a less than 100% effective Tony Green. The Bills virtually died last year when they lost Tony Green. He had had an extraordinary season. Indeed, I considered him the best defensive player in the NFL a year ago. Gifford disagreed, but that's typical. <laughs> uh, and you left that one. Doug Jones, of course, a strong safety is lost for the season. He's being placed by Ed Jones. It was an offside penalty against Buffalo. Second down, a long two. The ball just over the 30. Cutter cutting back, and he is really nailed by Mike Kadish. Kadish is another story by himself out of Notre Dame. Started with Miami. Showed nothing. Finally got started up here. Has been a steadily improving player. The National Football League fans know by this time all about him because it's been a recurring story. Key play after key play. Didn't yeah. look bad there, did he? A fine football player. Another one right next to him is Jeff Winans. They played against each other in the classic Notre Dame USC game for three years. Now Ron Johnson, number 30, is in the ball game for the Giants on third down of three. Coder lost one. Ron Johnson. Here comes Dawkins. Big hole. Flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Dawkins goes out of bounds at the 42-yard line, a gain of 27, but keep in mind the flag is down far upfield at the line of scrimmage. It's a probable holding penalty against the Giants, the same old situation. There it is that's been recited to you so many times. But this much must be said about Joe Dawkins. He is, in a sense, a retread, having played with two prior teams before coming to the Giants. But he is something more than a pedestrian ball player because he has the capacity to chew up critical yardage and he is a good receiver. The 10-yard markoff against New York nullifies a 27-yard run by Dawkins. Seven minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the first quarter. A fast quarter. Buffalo controlling the early moments on the ground and now New York with possession as we look again at Kadish. Kadish will be spending his night working against Bob Hyland, as you saw there. The holding call against New York, against Tom Mullen, the second-year man out of West Missouri State. Third down and 13, a passing situation for Craig Morton. A prevent defense for Buffalo. Morton will go down, and he bobbles the ball. Morton goes down, pressure from Pat Toomey. And Willie Young was there to assist. Morton has been sacked time and again this year. There are some players on the Giant team who openly feel this is the result of Bill Onsbarger's system. Onsbarger doesn't use what the Giants used in years before he got there. 
The quick dump off pass. Talkington specialized in it. The quick dump off pass either to the backs of the tight end Bob Tucker. Tucker, a fine ball player, is finding scant use for himself this year. Dave Jennings will kick from approximately his two yard line. Deep is 21, Gary Heyman. 26, Ed Jones. Jennings, who does all the long punting, gets off a of beauty. Fair catch was not called for. <laughs> and hustling down there, Rondi Colbert for New York. We'll be back in just a moment. There's an illegal coverage by the Giants. More than the two allotted men downfield on the coverage. Five-yard penalty. The Giants will punt again. Jennings now deep in his own end zone. Single safety back now for Buffalo. And now Ed Jones moves back. This is Heyman, Gary Heyman. Heyman looking for a picket line and can find nothing but Giants and goes down at midfield. 45-yard punt, six-yard return. And I mentioned that classic meeting between USC and Notre Dame. And this Saturday on ABC's NCAA College Football, the Trojans will travel to Notre Dame. And believe me, it's tough when you move into <laughs> South Bend to meet them. I've been there, and they hurt. You'll see, of course, that high-powered offense with All-American Steve uh, Ricky Bell of USC. He's oh. gone over 1,000 yards. He's ahead of O.J. Simpson's pace out there, Howard. Yeah, it's incredible. And you should know about going into Notre Dame. Three times the Giffer played against Notre Dame during his USC career. Yeah. Twice he lost. But that... Oh, one for three. Dan Devine's really been pulling them out. Last second victories over last minute over North Carolina. Last second over the Air Force Academy. Ben Martin doesn't have a winning record at Air Force, but I'll tell you, he's done some job. Thank you, gentlemen. They've got you named now Spanky, which we approve. <laughs> Alex. That's NCAA College Football this Saturday, 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 Central, 10.30 Pacific time over most of these ABC stations. Look at that sign. USC and Notre Dame, midfield for Buffalo, just inside the Giants' territory. Their second possession. Braxton gets the call over the left side. Picks up about three yards. It'll be second down and seven as Jim Braxton, the 240-pounder out of West Virginia, is back in the ball game. Thank you very much here at Ridge Stadium. We have 6.05 left and counting down in the first quarter. The score still nothing, nothing. Buffalo dominant with ball control, but a key fumble by Braxton thwarted that one touchdown drive. The Giants have picked up one first down, but that's all they've really had the opportunity to do. The Bills then stopped them. Second down along seven. O.J. Simpson, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. Carries the tackler forward for a yard, a yard and a half. Number 71, Dave Gallagher. Remember the two to watch in that offensive line especially. Not that Walt Patulski isn't a great defensive end right there, but offensively 67, McKenzie 68, DeLamalea. They're the pulling running guards who so much remind us of Thurston and Kramer. And let's get off Patulski's face for a moment and return to the game. He looks like Errol Flynn, Patulski, doesn't he? Third down and six. The ball at the 46-yard line. Dvorak, number 66, is now a tackle for the Giants. The Giants, obviously, depending upon small, quick defensive linemen in pursuit of Simpson. Ferguson going to the air, firing complete to Bob Chandler, another product of USC that has really sparked the Buffalo passing attack. By the works on the coverage. In the way, the Giffa got in that plug for USC, but he's absolutely right. Chandler's in his fifth year. He's always been an underrated receiver. He's there when you need him most. And this year, they really needed him because Ahmad Rashad got racked up in the last preseason game against Kansas City. Is out for the year. You remember Ahmad Rashad originally was known as Lenny Moore. Brilliant all-around athlete, superb receiver. But the Bills have made up for his depart. First and 10 for Buffalo. The ball is at the 28-yard line of New York. Simpson following Braxton. You saw the big block by Braxton. That's why he's so valuable as Clyde Powers finally made the stop. But if we can look at that again, you'll see why the Buffalo Bills want Braxton in the lineup. He absolutely wiped out the giant linebacker. Big number 34, Braxton. And you know, you know, opened Frank, so many holes for Simpson. Excuse me. You know, it's it's so funny. You know, you talk about O.J. Simpson and that great line in front of him. And I'm sure that the McKinsey and all those guys are in front of him. They appreciate a, a runner like uh, Simpson. Now you see Broxton. Broxton really didn't make a devastating block. He put his head in there and he, and he held the guy up enough, and Simpson went right around it. He's a great running back. Second down, a long three. 
Ball at the 22. Simpson following Braxton again. Turns, Chris has the first down, or very close to it. I think he's got it. They're down to about the 17 now. First down, Buffalo. I didn't mean to overlook when talking about uh, Lamalore and McKenzie, Frank. The other two, Donnie Green, who's having a big year, and our old friend Dave Foley, 78, out of Ohio State, once a Jets first round draft choice. An intent loose Saban is the figure on your screen. There is Bill Arnsparker. Quite a tribute to the Big Ten. Five of the six offensive linemen for the Bills are out of the Big Ten. Ball is just short of the 17 as Simpson gets the call again. And this time he runs into Brad Van Pelt, number 10, Bobby Brooks, number 37, up there helping. And thus far, the Giants' defense have contained O.J. You wouldn't say that with any other player, but in speaking of O.J. Simpson, you don't think of him as any other player. Ten carries for 39 yards. That's the figure unofficially on the juice thus far. That's not too bad. But for the juice, it's hardly up to his usual spectacular exploits. Second down and 10. Ball just short of the 17-yard line. Ferguson. Out to J.D. Hill. And Henry Stuckey was there, close to a first down. And now they mark it. And Howard, you know, that's what I was talking about. That, that particular play right there. It was second down. Usually uh, two or three years ago, Buffalo would have ran and tried to pick up either first down or short yardage and then go again with the running play. But now with the confidence they have in their quarterback, Ferguson, they throw the ball with second down and long yardage. It's a passing down for them. So how are you going to, you know, how are you going to really try and key on, on O.J. all day? Offensively, Alex, you're right. They're a complete team, and it's not limited to Ferguson alone. The backup quarterback from B.C., Gary Morangi, is a beauty. The Bills on third down, a long three yards, just short of the 10-yard line. They've converted four or five thus far. This will be the big man, Braxton. Did he get in? No. Marking it just short. Jim Braxton, a very versatile player. Blocks, runs, receives passes. He himself has gained over 250 yards coming into tonight's game. And he, and he leads the conference in scoring, Frank. Not O.J., but Braxton. So you know they got quality ball players. When we have an opportunity, I hope we'll be able to get to a brief interview I did with Joe Delamalua before the game in which he tells what he thinks will happen to the Giants by the middle of the second quarter. First down and goal. The ball inside the one-yard line. Simpson. Forget it. <laughs> Buffalo in nine plays. Heads up play calling as it's called from the bench by Buffalo through their tight end Seymour and Gant. The Bills consumed four minutes and 22 seconds in that drive. We've got two minutes left to go in the first quarter as we prepare for the conversion attempt. And I'd like to get, if I may, Terry, the stats on how much time the Giants have had the ball in the first quarter. Ball control. John Leipold. And the Bills are on the scoreboard with two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Buffalo 7, New York nothing. 1956. Grooves are cut into runways to help channel water away. 1966. Grooves are cut into freeways to help improve traction on wet roads. 1975. Goodyear presents the polysteel radial with eight wide grooves specially designed to help channel water away and a high traction rubber that really grips on roads wet or dry. The polysteel radio keeps its feet even in the rain. And tonight, Howard is right with us here in our booth at Rich Stadium in Buffalo with Alex Karras. I'm Frank Gifford, and we're sharing the stadium with some 80,000 Buffalo Bill fans who have just watched the Bills go out in front, seven nothing. Rifle puts the foot to it, Danny Bugs. A sprinter takes the ball and pulls up at the 15-yard line and is immediately nailed there by Ed Jones. 
And Howard, you know, it, this looks very, very simple. And as I was saying, the offensive uh, linemen, they love this because all they have to do is knock their man just maybe two seconds. Simpson will do the rest for you. It's <laughs> such a pleasure. Beautiful. Beautiful touch. Look at that little backhand he does. I love him. He makes too much money, though. <laughs> Don't be bitter. You're an actor. Bugs out to the 13 yard line for New York. Their second possession. They're having some problems, Frank. Uh, offensively, the Giants are right now. Here comes Dawkins over the left side, and Dawkins out over the 15 to the 17 yard line. Game Frank. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Four yards, it'll be second and six. There's a perfect example of O.J. There's McKenzie with him, and he's telling McKenzie what a great job he's doing. <laughs> and and uh, they have a real thing going, and, and, and let me just tell you, psychologically, this guy's going to work a little harder for an O.J. Simpson. He, he There's no question about it. He appreciates it. what he does for him. He'll express that later in the game in an interview I did with him before the game. The ball marked at the 16, is second down and seven. Dawkins again over the right side, and... Pat Tume, the former Dallas Cowboy, remember that famed front four, made the stop. Re remember, Frank, I mentioned that I spoke to Joe Delamalua before the game, and I asked him what he thought would happen to the Giants. This was his reply. I think they can be tough if we give them the opportunity to be tough. If we get on them right away, I think they'll fold eventually. Well, that's rather succinct. <laughs> Third down and seven. To the point. And Ray Rhodes does not hold on. Covered there by Ed Jones. With 39 seconds left in the first quarter, the Bills have controlled the ball for 11 minutes of that quarter. That tells the story here. One touchdown threat quartered by a fumble by Jim Braxton down at about the Giant 15, maybe inside that, the 13, recovered by the Giants. The second Buffalo drive as they exercise total ball control successful for the TD. Jennings in a familiar geographic location. That's where he was a few moments ago when he had to punt away. Back deep, Gary Heyman 21 with Ed Jones 26. Jennings gets off another fine kick. Taken by Heyman and a flag is down. Flag is down at the seven yard line, a 46 yard punt by Jennings. And I want to look at this call again, because he's going to call against Buffalo on roughing the kicker. And I just can't see it. Yeah. You cannot touch the kicker, obviously. He is in a very vulnerable position, off balance in the air. Well, wait, he's pushing there. back a blocker. And his momentum carries him in. Well, Jeff Wynan well, has a lot I of momentum. A shot at you think so? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I've done that before. Well, uh, you're an expert at it, but. <laughs> well, then you got to believe me, Howard. He took a shot at him. That was Jeff Wynan's. He goes 260 pounds. Even a minor shot could smart. I don't blame him. You got to do it once in a while to him, Frank. You know, just walked into our booth, gentlemen. He was my bellhop once in a Jersey hotel. I told him to stick to that. Instead, he became one of America's leading comedians. Gabriel Kaplan, welcome back, Cotter. First and 10 for New York. Just short of their 22-yard line. Martin misses the handoff. Gets a yard, a yard and a half on his own. Craig Martin, who had those up and down years at Dallas, played behind Don Meredith when he came up as the number one pick from California in 1965. Then along came a guy named Roger Staubach. And Craig, while he played a lot, started a great deal for Dallas. Never felt secure there. Signed a WFL agreement a year ago. And the Giants took the chance, gave the Cowboys the number one draft pick, and he is now their quarterback. Time ticks away in the first quarter. The Buffalo Bills out in front of the New York Giants, 7 to nothing, and we'll return in just a moment. Seating announcement was brought to you by number 73 of the Buffalo Bills, Earl Edwards, as a public service provided by the National Football League. Second down and eight for the Buffalo Bills. They lead the Giants seven to nothing as a extra ball bounds onto the field. I don't believe it's an, an official NFL. One of the officials picked it up out of your camera shot, threw it off, but that was a delay. Think that was Giants. an offensive play, Frank, from the Giants. I'm sure it was, Frank. You think they need two? <laughs> I'll tell you, the, Buff the Buffalo Bills right now are playing very good, tough defense. Of course, we talked about Earl Edwards, you know, and, and he's really made a difference. He's a good pass rusher, sound pass rusher. 
Second down and eight. The ball just over the 23 for the Giants. Craig Morton, the quarterback. Handoff goes to Cutter, and Cutter gets out over the 25 to the 27. There was a ball loose in that pileup. We'll see how it's ruled. Buffalo picks off a Cutter fumble. Merv Croker, I believe. Number 52, the middle linebacker, Merv Croker, came up with the football for Buffalo, and Buffalo with a 7-0 lead will have great field position inside the Giants' 22-yard line. Joe Ferguson, a three-year man out of Arkansas, has started every game for the Buffalo Bills since he came up as a number three draft pick. Had a disappointing senior year at Arkansas, probably why he went so late. He has a strong arm. He's 5 of 6 for 51 yards on the night. Braxton, the big fullback, gets the call and carries Giants down to about the 21-yard line. It'll be a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. There's Kroka, the young man from Iowa State, part of the linebacking car of the Buffalo Bills. A real fine, too. He was a 14th round draft pick. They're not expecting to stay around too long. He's done a fine job. Second down and six. Simpson following Braxton to the outside. Well, turns the corner and turns on the juice. And finally got brought down by Brian Kelly. I think he'll be just short of another first down. Giff put it exactly right. He turned on the juice. The space wasn't there unless he could outrun the defender, which is exactly what he did with that quick acceleration that's so uniquely his. Of course, if you're an offensive lineman, exactly what happened there, all you have to do is rub a belly for about two seconds, and he's gone. <laughs> that's all he ever had to do with you. Inside the 17, third down, short yardage. The two tight ends are in. 87 Seymour, Gant 88. Third and short, Simpson has the first down inside the 15, hurdles forward to close to the 13. There are the statistics for that first quarter. Of course, the real story told in time of possession, Buffalo absolutely wears you down with that big offensive line. They had 21 offensive plays to the Giants' 10. And that time of possession, as Howard mentioned a moment ago, one of the key factors in why the Bills are undefeated. Next week, the Miami Dolphins will be here. Should they win tonight and beat Miami, they could take a two-game lead in the AFC East. Of course, that's all if, because Miami is tough, as the Jets found out yesterday. Simpson with a little stutter step. This time, does not get through. Gets a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be second down and eight. There's Reggie McKenzie, that big left guard we have been watching all night. He works in there with Joe DeLamalure. And there is what you call your basic super block. Oh, yeah. He puts his head right in there, hits the numbers, and Simpson runs right off it. That's beautiful uh, execution, both blocker and runner. Big man, Alex. 6'7", 245 pounds. At the 13, the Bills have a second down and eight. Play fake by Ferguson. Looking for Hill. He should be open. He is open. Let J.D. Hill go to the inside, expecting help, I guess. He got none. J.D. Hill with that great speed, wide open. Touchdown, Buffalo. Well, J.D. Hill with the super speed, and finally, last year, really started to come into his own, back from a knee injury. And he hurt his knee as a rookie. Gets the touchdown pass from Ferguson, who is now 6 of 7 for 64 yards. Light pole for the conversion. Well, Howard, I don't know. I've seen the Giants make an awful lot of mental mistakes right off the bat. That hurts you. I guess I don't know. Throwing to receivers like John Gilliam. Tarkenton on the verge of breaking many of John Unitas' all-time NFL records and throwing to this man, his speedster, John Gilliam. It'll be the Minnesota Vikings versus the Chicago Bears, an annual duel in that central division of the National Football Conference next Monday night.
But right now we're in Buffalo where the Buffalo Bills have taken a 14 to nothing lead. Ball possession, long drives, great passing by Ferguson, clutch running by Simpson and Braxton. Deep to Danny Bugs, who will run it out from his own end zone. And Bugs is out over the 20 to the 22-yard line, hit there by Tom Rood of Buffalo, a 25-yard return. The Buffalo special teams thus far tonight are playing very well indeed. One of the terrible problems the Giants have in their home city is the fact that they're great winners of preseason games. And glorious stories are written about them, and the fans inevitably expect too much of them. The coach, Bill Arnsbarger, is a realist. It takes time to rebuild. There's Bill Arnsbarger, the Giants moving first and 10, just inside their own 23, Joe Dawkins. You had a good look at J.D. Hill a moment ago on the sidelines. Very happy J.D. Hill. Let's look at that touchdown pass he caught a few moments ago. Ferguson, good protection. And there you see the big hole. You see number 48, Stuckey. He had passed. Now you'll see it a little better. He just turns Hill loose, expecting help, obviously, from the inside, which he did not get. I suspect he expected that help from Carl Lockhart. Second down and six. Martin with pressure, trying to get rid of it, finally does. And it goes to Joe Dawkins, and Joe Dawkins over the 30 to the 31, and Martin frantically trying to find someone to give it to. Finally came up with Dawkins as Winans, the defensive left end for Buffalo, was pressuring Morton. But he held together, Craig did, on that play. He didn't lose his poise, and he put the ball in there. Rifled it in to Dawkins, who, as I said earlier, is a good receiver. Well, we'll get off that. I don't know what that means anyways, Frank. Third down and two. Ron Johnson. Johnson has the first down, moving out to the 34-yard line. Howard, right, here's a guy who I, I just don't understand. Uh, I think he's got all the credentials of being a great running back, and yet he really shows flashes at times of coming on and then dies. Instantly. Ron Johnson? He was a great running back. He was never great running to the outside, but he had the speed and the strength to burst and cut inside, and he was superb, superb coming out of that backfield on those short, dump passes, which they don't use nearly as much as I mentioned earlier under the Onsbog system. That's the best way to use it. First and 10 for New York in the 34 in a stacked offense. Rhodes now in motion to his left. Getting the call is Dawkins up the middle. He'll get three yards. It'll be second down and seven. What we left out about Ron Johnson was the fact that he also, following his second thousand yard season, he had knee surgery. That's true. And he also had point. surgery on his thigh, and he has had a difficult time with injuries. And but he says he is healthy, and uh, he just doesn't understand why he can't break it loose anymore. He's also often been at odds with the management, quite frankly. On second down, Dawkins over the call. Gets out close to the 40-yard line. It'll be third down at five. Hit there by Merv Croker, the middle linebacker for Buffalo. Alex, the point I want to make is I talked before about how often Craig Morton has been sacked this year. The Giants do not have a big offensive line. They simply don't. And ergo, a really strong defensive line can pour through them. In that kind of situation, you've got to jump off to your running back to your tight end. He hasn't thrown the Bob Tucker 38 yet tonight. There he did. See what five. I mean? First down, New York, the ball just over the 45. That's exactly what they have to do. Howard, we'll look at it again. All right, great, Miss Steve, tell us about it again. <laughs> just telling it like it is before it ever is. <laughs> All right. Now, what's this one going to be? <laughs> A two-yard gain. First down, just over the 45. Martin automatic. He's saying one. Rhodes in motion. Johnson turning the corner, picks up two yards. It'll be second down and eight. Frank Oliver coming up from his left cornerback spot. I was so tempted to say he picked up three yards. I really want it for you, Frank. I know you want the Giants to win, and you never knock me when we ever when we get over to Detroit and watch the Detroit Lions play. I'm not knocking the Giants. I'm with you, Frank. <laughs> there you see, ball just short of the 47-yard line. 
Second down, Rhodes out to the right. Walker to the left, top of your screen. Play action fake by Morton, going deep for Bucks. Or rather, Ray Rhodes. And running right with him was Ed Jones. Ray Rhodes did not work out all week for the Giants either. He has a sore knee. There's Ed Jones. A Oh, I like two that little Jones, didn't they? Two short Jones. Two little Jones. And he got that name because he was with the Dallas Cowboys. He's out of Rutgers, the banks of the old Raritan. Dallas elected not to keep him. Buffalo, in view of their shortage of healthy secondaries, picked him up, and he's a tough kid, a good-looking football player. Third down, a long eight. Martin with time, but no receiver. Finds Ron Johnson, underthrows, and then is picked off. Picked off by Scorpin. John Scorpin, a linebacker who had taken a deep drop. Ron Johnson was open. Morton did not lay it up far enough, and Scorpin picks it off. So Buffalo has good field position. They lead in the football game 14 to nothing. We'll be returning to Buffalo in just a moment. Here's John Scorpin, one of eight Penn State linebackers in the National Football League. They're all over the lot, and he has just intercepted for Buffalo with 7.30 remaining in the first half. Scorpin taking a deep drop. A short pass by Morton was picked off. Buffalo has a first and ten, their own 27-yard line. Ferguson. Throwing to number 81, Bob Chandler. Let's go back a moment ago when John Scorpin took that drop. And Buffalo's been working this past week with their linebackers because Baltimore really blitzed them last week. Buffalo pulled it out 38 to 31, but they got hurt. And there you see the deep drop by Scorpin. Now let's look at Scorpin. He's looking back right into the eyes of Morton. He sees Ron Johnson is really kind of loping downfield. He sure was. A secondary receiver. Also back there deep and helping out was a safety man for Buffalo. First down Buffalo. Simpson over the right side. It's out to the 41 yard line. John Mendenhall made the stop there for New York. The Jews put it right on the table at the top of the telecast. He said look if they stop me tonight Joe Ferguson will have a field day and that's exactly what Joe Ferguson is doing. And he had a great game last week when it was necessary in a 38 31 win over Baltimore 14 of 26 two touchdowns over 250 yards for Joe Ferguson last week. He's seven of eight tonight. Second down and nine. Draw play Simpson. Simpson inside the 50 has the first down. And right now, let's pause five seconds for our stations along the line to identify themselves. Six twenty, and the clock is moving. Remaining in the first half of the Buffalo New York Giant game from Buffalo, New York. Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell and Spanky Alex Karras, watching the Buffalo Bills move to a fourteen to nothing lead. They have had total ball control during the night. Simpson scored the first touchdown for one yard out, and then Joe Ferguson hit J.D. Hill from 13 yards out to make it 14 to nothing. Simpson, oh, and he runs into the middle of the Giants line. He was stopped that time, Giff, but on the previous run by Simpson, when he got the necessary yardage for the first down, he evidenced so clearly one of his greatest talents, the instant change of direction. He was running left, stopped, first right. Picked up the eight or nine yards they needed then for the first down. New York Giants gained 41. O.J. Simpson, 62. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 10. Play action fake with Ferguson. This time it's batted away. Number 71, Dave Gallagher. In there pressuring Ferguson, who could not find a receiver. He really had time to get rid of it. Gallagher, of course, was the number one draft pick of the Bears a year ago. Saw a lot of action for them. All-American out of Michigan. Interesting young man. All academic, too. 
as well as an All-American of Michigan. 6'4", 256 pounds, Dave Gallagher. Third down and 10. Ball just over midfield, 5'11", remaining in the first half. O.J. ranks 10th after five games in rushing. That's including teams, Frank. <laughs> He's right behind Oakland right now. <laughs> Flag goes up as Ferguson goes back. Fires to Tanner, complete. Oh, Tanner right. holds on, taking a wicked shot at the 26, but a flag is down. Play will probably be called back, but I love that Chandler. He has a way of sneaking in there. There are some guys in this league who just find the open space. Illegal motion against New York. It'll be brought back. Bob Chandler, you know, was a great receiver at University of Southern California, but he really, just this year with, as you said, Howard, uh, when Rashad uh, was went down, well, all of a sudden Chandler emerged, and he has really turned into a quite uh, a player. I just love that John McKay anyway. He is some coach, and there's USC undefeated again, defending its national championship. That's why I so look forward to the game against Notre Dame this Saturday. And did you notice another of the disciples of McKay? Cobb was the guy who brought the Bengals, a rookie defensive back, to victory yesterday, picking off a stabler pass intended for Cliff Branch. Wherever you turn around, you find students of McKay, even in the broadcast booth. Frank Gifford. And proud of it. Third down and 15. Ball at the 46 for Buffalo, five yard penalty. Again, good coverage, and Ferguson will go down at the 35. A lot of time it was Jack, Jack Gregory. Gregory. That's it. But the coverage downfield made it possible for Ferguson to be sacked by Gregory. So this time, the Giants finally held the Bills. We've got 4.59 left in the second quarter. And I look forward to Thursday night. Earlier you saw a sign talking about Mongo. You remember Alex played Mongo in Blazing Saddles, a funny movie, and Alex was great. But this man is a multifaceted and very fine dramatic actor, as you'll see in Babe Thursday night. Meyer Bateman. And this is Feaster, Danny Bugs, who bobbles the ball at the 20. And he's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Danny Bugs going the wrong direction, out of bounds at the nine yard line. John Scorpin played him beautifully. 42 yard punt. A 13-yard loss on the return. We'll be back. Missed by that killer whale, Shamu. And a young lady is supposed to ride it on our show, but there's a danger factor involved, and we may not be able to do that. If you've got any guts at all, you'll ride that whale, Howard. First and 10, and Ron Johnson gets the completion. Another giant first down. That's the dump-off pass that I was talking about, and that's the way to use Ron Johnson best. He's a superb receiver. And when you're being rushed by an overpowering defensive line against a smallish offensive line, get rid of it quick. That's what Sir Francis used to do when he was with the Giants so often, Frank. Well, and, and he's, he's still uh, doing it with Minnesota. We'll see you next week. Yeah, plus he can run a little better than, than uh, Morton. Can. Just a little. The first down is at the 28-yard line of the New York Giants. Dawkins gets the call, gets a big hole over the 35 to the 37, a gain of nine. Joe Dawkins, who did a lot of work up here in Buffalo before being traded to New York last year. There he is, Joe Dawkins. Dawkins again over the right side and has the first down out over the 40-yard line. And now the Giants beginning to move on the ground. That's Mike right. Katish made the stop. Getting good offensive blocking. Getting it out of Hicks, getting it out of Van Horn. At the risk of taking your abuse, I will point out, Howard, <laughs> that Buffalo trailed Baltimore 14 0 last week. Came back to win the game. At the risk of fairness, Frank, I said at the top that Buffalo had defensive weaknesses. You can score on them. Dawkins is the workhorse. Inside the 50 yard line at the 49, hit there by Frank Oliver. Dawkins doing the heavy running load for the uh, Giants. And a beautiful lead block by 63, Doug Van Horn on that play. Frank Oliver is shaken up at midfield. He was the cornerback who came up to make the stop. He is being attended to by the trainers. Game.
Teams come and go, but bowling is still one of the most popular sports. 30 million men, women, and children enjoy the game. Many use a special ball. You can only buy it at a pro shop or bowling center. It has five stars and a great name rolling with it. Dick Weber. AMF puts its name on the line, too. And that name adds even more value to sports products like Dick Weber All-Pro Balls. AMF brings out the best in you. Now the birds are chirping a little less noisily for Frank Oliver at the moment. The bells have quieted. As Ron Johnson on second down gets the first down inside the 40, bobbles the ball. A say whether he had been ruled stopped at the 39-yard line. Placed him on that one. We have an official's timeout, and down on the field is number 26, Ed Jones, the strong safety man of Buffalo. Giants retain their position. Ed Jones gets treatment. That's our old friend Jack Gregory, nine-year man, Delta State, acquired by the Giants from Cleveland when he was at odds with the Cleveland management, then recognized as one of the best defensive ends in football, came to the Giants, had a brilliant initial year with them, then had contractual difficulties with them, didn't recant plus family problems at home, didn't recapture his real form, but playing well tonight. How's that for a price? That's very good. <laughs> Jack Gregory, number 81. And again, NCAA college football this Saturday, USC and Notre Dame. Let's hear more about it now. This Saturday on ABC's NCAA College Football, the Trojans of the University of Southern California travel to Notre Dame to take on the Fighting Irish. You'll see a high-powered USC offense led by tailback Ricky Bell battle a strong Notre Dame defensive unit anchored by All-American Steve Niehaus. Be sure to join us for this annual clash. That's NCAA College Football this Saturday at 1.30 Eastern Time over most of these ABC stations. Ed Jones, the rookie from Rutgers, being assisted off the field, obviously injured and in pain. If the Giants can put a score on the board, suddenly we've got a ball game after they've been outmatched for almost the entire first half. But now their offensive line is cleaning out Buffalo. Two rookies on the left side now for Buffalo in the secondary. Martin immediately goes to the air, fires, is complete. Joe Dawkins out of the backfield. And Dawkins picks up another giant first down. 12-yard completion, hit there by Croker. Now in for Ed Jones is Steve Freeman. He's a rookie from Mississippi State. In for Frank Oliver is Charlie Ford over on the left side. And, of course, Ford has been around. He was had been benched. Now Oliver is back in the ball game. He's all right now. So we have the two rookies on the left side of the secondary for Buffalo. First and 10, the ball inside the 25. Ron Johnson spinning, twisting down to the 20-yard line. Gets four yards. It'll be second down and six. Ron Johnson. New York starting to move a little bit, Howard, on this on these sequence of plays yeah, right here. Playing they well, they've mounted a running game. I think Buffalo's had a little letdown. Uh, they're not playing as uh, tough as they were the first quarter. Getting close to the two-minute warning. Martin. Touchdown, New York. We've got a ball game. Ray Rose, the second-year man out of Tulsa, takes the touchdown pass from Craig Morton of 20 yards. And the Giants began that drive, keep in mind, at their own nine-yard line. Beautifully executed, much of it on the ground. One key dump off pass, though, to Ron Johnson. And then finally, the touchdown pass to Ray Rhodes. Two passes into Boven, two to Joe Dawkins. 91 yards in nine plays. The Giants using two minutes and 30 seconds. George Hunt. Morton will hold. And the Giants shorten Buffalo's lead to 14 to 7. At the two-minute warning. You know, speaking of Saturday Night Live, he will attempts to jump 14 buses on his motorcycle live, plus the fabulous antics of the Harlem Globetrotters this Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. 
Wide World of Sports coming up Saturday. Evil Knievel and the Globetrotters. And meanwhile, here in Buffalo, the New York Giants have gone 91 yards in nine plays. The Bills still out in front, 14 to 7. But you get a feeling that you sometimes have in football games that a team that jumps off to that big lead, sometimes they'll let up just a little bit, and it's really hard to put it back together again. Here's George Hunt. His 21 is Gary Heyman. Number 33 is Vic Washington. Washington traded to San Francisco last year after big years with the 49ers, or rather traded to Houston. Now a Buffalo Bill. And Hunt drives Washington into the end zone where he will attempt the run back. Out over the 20 and hit hard. Vic Washington close to the 25-yard line. And let's take a look at that touchdown pass by Craig Morton one more time. Again, a lot of time. Let's look at it. Good pass blocking. There's the play action. Fake to Ron Johnson. And right on target. Ray Rowe beating rookie defender Frank Oliver. First and ten for Buffalo. The ball just inside the 25. Simpson. And Simpson pulls Jack Gregory out to the 30-yard line. You know, I was talking about the show last Saturday. I had the privilege of watching it from your dressing room. Thank you again for the seats, by the way. You know what I really enjoyed was, well, I really enjoyed Johnny Cash. And you know, for years. He really is special. Just tremendous. He got a standing ovation from the people at the Texas State Fair. He deserves it. Like an inspirational performer, an inspirational life story. Just great. Johnny Cash. Proud to have him aboard. Second down and five for the Bills. Here comes Braxton. And Braxton gets away from Pat Hughes, but nailed there by Jack Gregory. Picks up three yards. Time remaining in the first half, 1-14. Buffalo takes timeout. They'll have two timeouts remaining. You know. Frank, excuse me, Frank. You didn't get tickets for his show last Saturday. You had to stay in the dressing room. You know there are no seats. Well, I'll tell you, next week is the one I want. I, I don't care how I get in. I got to get in. I want to see Kate Smith. I haven't seen her on television for so long, and I love her. She's one of the greatest singers of all time, as far as I'm concerned. You're Give me tickets, there. Howard. You're there. You're there. Thank you. We've got some cast next week, incidentally, and not incidentally, really. Sadly, Ed Jones, the defensive back from Rutgers with Buffalo, uh, apparently has a fractured arm. At least that's the early diagnosis. So you won't be seeing him again tonight, and he'll be out for a long time, if not for the rest of the season, assuming the accuracy of the reported diagnosis. That's just a shame. Always is. I don't like that. Get it off there. They haven't seen you lately. Oh, you Chet Forty, please, Chet. Give me a break. You saw Joe Ferguson. Who had called the timeout, went over to Curtin Fur with Lou Saban on the sidelines. Third down and one. 114 remaining in the first half. The Bills out in front of the Giants, 14 to 7. Simpson gets the first down, out over the 35 to the 37. First down, Buffalo. First down, Buffalo. The Bills trying to go without the huddle, but the Giants delaying it as long as they can. Clock ticking away inside one minute. For much of the first half, Giffa, the Giants looked like a ragtag team. On the first down, a flag flies. Ferguson looking for Hill. And he did not have both feet inbound, but a flag is down also at the line of scrimmage. Point I was about to make is that for much of the first half, the Giants looked like a ragtag team. But they stabilized, and that's the mark, I think, of Onsbarger. Organized as he is, meticulous as he is, a team won't totally fall apart on him under ordinary circumstances. Of course, even he can fall prey to that. Washington scored 49 on the Giants earlier this year. Well, they have a lot of young players. 21 of them are either in their first or second year. He's turning it completely over. It's going to be his football team. You saw the motion call go against the Buffalo Bills. Illegal procedure. They did not have six men on the line of scrimmage. 44 seconds remaining in the half. 
First down and 15. J.D. Hill had a little jump on Bobby Brooks, but the pass would have had to been perfect, and it was overthrown by Ferguson. Ferguson, 7 of 10 for 77, and if you're playing against the clock, as the Bills are right now here in the first half, this is the man you go to with that great speed. Great sprinter in college at Arizona State was a 9-3 sprinter. I have heard so many wonderful reports about this man, Lou Saban, and, and from other ball players who say he's probably the nicest, most wonderful guy they've ever had the pleasure of playing under. And really because there's one thing, he, he treats everyone like a gentleman and he respects what they do off the field and uh, he wants the total control on field and that's it. Second down, the ball at the 32. Ferguson back and looking at once again. Firing over the middle to the big tight end, Paul Seymour, who it really is almost a tackle there's Ferguson rushing up with 30 seconds on the clock to call timeout gain of 14 yards will be short of the first down for years they've been talking about making Seymour a tackle Frank indeed they drafted Reuben Gant out of Oklahoma State as their number one draft choice a couple of years ago with that very point in mind moving Seymour over and moving Reuben Gant into the tight end spot but somehow Seymour always winds up as the starting tight end Short of a first down by one yard. Now Gant comes in for Seymour. You know, we talk so much about your show, Howard. Not too much. I'm not putting it that way, but it's a good <laughs> show that follows you. Uh, SWAT. It is. Very good. Good show. action series. I'm so proud of Alex Garris, though. That's Thursday night, right? Right. Starring, touching performance. You know what I like most about the whole thing is that it isn't on ABC and yet ABC doesn't care if I plug it and I think it's a it's a tribute to ABC. Well thank and you. It so means it, it, I think it's, it's, it's a show that they know that there's a little significance involved in it Howard and I'm very proud of ABC. Touch of class. Third and one the ball resting at the 41 yard line just short of the 41 they have to get to the 42. Ferguson wants to go for it all. Chandler tied up back there with number 37, Bobby Brooks. Chandler looking back over his shoulder. The crowd here, obviously a Buffalo Bills crowd. Well, that could have been called interference. Yeah, that could I have been offensive interference this. right there. He has a right to go down the field too, you know. And he just bumped him off the play. He could have very well intercepted. I think that glance back over his left shoulder by Bobby Brooks helped him. At least he was turning to look for the football. Marv Bateman, the punt for Buffalo. Danny Bucks, number 86, the single safety with 25 seconds remaining in the half. Bugs, and he drops the football again. And this time, Bugs is driven all the way back to the seven Howard. yard line. A 42 yard punt, a loss of six. Frank is, Oliver was down there for Buffalo. Is he ever going to run forward? No. <laughs> they didn't teach him that at West Virginia. So New York with 14 seconds remaining in the half takes possession at their own seven yard line. Come on, Bugs, you're bugging us. Danny Bugs, Giants top draft pick. Sprinter, 9-5 sprinter. Backwards. <laughs> He's from West Virginia. <laughs> 14 seconds remaining in the half and Craig Morton at the seven yard line chooses to let the time tick away in the first half. Three, two, one. That's the end of the first half. A good first quarter for Buffalo. A good second quarter for New York. And there's the score at halftime. Buffalo 14, New York 7. We'll be back. Yeah. The Buffalo Bills have a 14-7 lead over the New York Giants. In an interesting first half, the Buffalo Bills did what we all expected they would do in the first quarter, Howard. Dominated the football game on the ground. 10-point passing by Ferguson. And then 
as we have seen so often with teams that get a lead, they sagged a little, the Giants came back. Looked like it was going to be a route. The very first touchdown was a simple one-yard dash by O.J. He had, in effect, brush blocking. You're looking at it right now. And then the quick acceleration going in by himself, so easily done. Then the second touchdown was, as you said, Joe Ferguson coming through, bearing the offense, going to J.D. Hill. That had to be a defensive error between Carl Lockhart and Stuckey. But now, then, of course, Craig Morton came in, got the protection, got the time, and Rhodes made a simple move against Frank Oliver, the rookie, and that was it. So we it, have a football game. We really do. It's a fine comeback by the Giants. And as I said, I give the coach credit. The team stabilized the smallish offensive line began blocking out the larger Buffalo defensive line, and suddenly Dawkins was picking up ground yardage. So was Ron Johnson. And then Morton wisely interspersed the pass, twice to Dawkins, once to Ferguson. It was uh, very interesting. And you called the two-yard game. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of fun on Monday Night Football, and over the past five years, we have seen some of the most interesting people you can imagine come into our booth. We have uh, had the vice president there. We've had uh, all such people as, well, John Lennon talking football with former governor of California, uh, Ronald, Ronald Reagan. Reagan. We've had John Wayne, Andy Williams, and it goes on and on. Wayne Hank Aaron. And, uh, yeah. We also have this guy in the booth with us every <laughs> Monday night, and he, of course, is an attraction. And Howard and I was kidding you a moment ago about not being able to get a seat at your show, but I did enjoy it. Uh, we've talked, of course, about Johnny Cash. Uh, it, it has all the excitement that people are always saying television should be different. Why don't they do something different? That television has a live variety show. It's your show, and they are doing something different, and you get the feel of you being there that it's going to go, it's beginning to catch, it's beginning to move. You're getting people that want to be there, they want to watch the show, they want to be with you. For instance, this coming week, you, uh, well, Kate Smith will be with you. And, uh, well, I really am appreciative of your kind words, and I can't tell you how much Emmy and I enjoyed your coming, sitting in the dressing room last Saturday night. And we're, we are excited about this Saturday night. We've got some lineup. Kate Smith, as you mentioned, La Belle, John Viner, the great mimic and a fine stand-up comic, Steve Landsberg, another. The Chinese acrobats of Taiwan, who, as you know, are among the most exciting they people exciting. ever on television. And finally, we talked about originating a remote live from SeaWorld in San Diego. And if you've ever seen the dolphins there and the killer whales, you know what I mean. As I said, I've been kissed by Shamu and a lovely 25-year-old gal, Diana Nyad, uh, who just recently swam around Manhattan Island, is going to swim on that whale if... Uh, she is permitted to do so because there is a danger factor involved and we don't want to misrepresent. And singing friendship with Muhammad Ali has to be the highlight of your career. <laughs> really enjoyed it, Howard. Thank Typically, you, in the National Football League, we had some exciting games throughout the league yesterday and typically on Monday Night Football. Let's take a look, take a look at the action as it took place, and here's Howard. That spot star, rookie head coach, winless Green Bay Packers, plays Texas Stadium, Irving, Texas, opposition Dallas Cowboys, and this was a hard-hitting, combative defensive game. This play illustrating, star back to Drew Pearson. Cracked down so savagely, he fumbles, the pack recovers. The pack was up for this one, believe me. They were hitting that way all day long. Took a surprising three-to-nothing lead in the first half. Then an early third quarter action, the handoff. Star back to Preston Pearson, the former stealer. 32-yard gain. Pearson had a great day, gained 101 yards all day. And then two plays later, the handoff to Newhouse. Touchdown, Dallas with a 7-3 lead. But Green Bay was destined to come back. Five plays after the ensuing kickoff. Hadel to Will Harrell, a brilliant rookie out of Pacific. Approaching the right sideline, eluding the tackle line that you just saw. 26 yards, touchdown, extra point missed. Green Bay, 9-7. to seven. And then, in later action, the score now 17-9 in favor of Dallas. The kickoff after a Dallas field goal. Steve Odom, the fleet-footed one from Utah. Moving into the middle, finding his hole, then darting left, eluding one, two tacklers. Going downfield, maybe on his way for a touchdown. But no, finally stopped. 73-yard kick run and all. That set up a Green Bay field goal. That made it 17-12 to 12 Dallas. Then, with a minute 52 left in the game, Hadel again from 26 yards out, spotting the big tight end, Rick McGeorge, out of Elon. And so, Green Bay upsets the Dallas Cowboys. The score, 19-17. to 17. Green Bay under, finally, a fresh start with Bart 
Dallas no longer unbeaten. The boots, the pants, and the angular look of Bum Phillips, the head coach of the Houston Oil, is no longer a league doormat, one of the better teams in the NFL. And this is the kind of hard-hitting game this one was. Close line tackle by Houston. And this tackle on Kilmer as he went out of bounds by Bob Brazil, the rookie linebacker from Jackson State. Brazil was ejected from the game after this one, and that aroused the Houston defense throughout the day. Still, Washington got the early lead. Second quarter action, no star score. Kilmer back. Charlie Taylor, we've talked enough about him. Number 42 gets the pass, and that set up a Washington touchdown. Washington leading 7 to nothing. Then early in the third quarter with the same score, Dan Pascarini back to throw. On the move, had to scramble. Found double zero, Kenny Burrow, all alone. He runs out of bounds after a fine catch, and they went in to score. Houston did. Missed the conversion. That made it 7-6. to six. Five plays later, after the kickoff, Billy Kilmer again to little Mike Thomas, fifth-round draft choice out of Las Vegas, Nevada. That one good for a 33-yard gain. Four plays later, it's fourth and 11 to go. It's on the Houston 24-yard line. In comes Joe Theismann to hold, and Mike Mosley kicks the field goal, but he's down by number 38, C.L. Whittington. Personal foul call, but the Redskins declined the field goal, which was good. Too bad for them, as later events prove, because on the very next play, Kilmer was intercepted. The Redskins don't even score. Second play of the fourth quarter. The Redskins leading 10 to 6. It's fourth and goal to go. Don Hardiman, the rookie, number one draft choice of Houston, goes in for the touchdown. Houston wins 13 10. The Detroit Lions against the Minnesota Vikings, Bloomington Stadium. And once again, the hitting that so typifies the black and blue division. But Minnesota is a solid, sound, balanced ball club this year that can strike anywhere at any time. Look at Tarkenton pointing to his blockers, telling them where to go. Downfield. Brilliant. Extraordinary catch by John Gilliam, number 42. And this typified Minnesota's play on the whole day. Always in that Minnesota attack, there is the likes of number 44. Forget that sideline squabble. Chuck Foreman, the complete football player, twisting, turning, spinning, bursting through the left side. Good for a 16-yard game. Chuck gained 107 yards on the day. And then Tarkenton to another receiver he's grown fond of. Eddie Marinaro out of Cornell. That was a touchdown. Minnesota went on to win it over Detroit, 25-19. America rolling. Roll on America roll. Get on Goodyear radios. Roll on America roll. Goodyear wants America on radios because gas-saving Goodyear radials can help America lower the cost of driving. There's a value-priced Goodyear radial tire to fit your kind of car and budget. Get on Goodyear radials. Save America, save. So come on, America. Let's get saving now on Goodyear radials. Roll on, America, roll. Pouring rain at Schaefer Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts. The signal for a day of defense. And the defense was mainly on the part of the New England Patriots against the Baltimore Colts. This play exemplifying what I mean. Tony McGee sacking young Burt Jones. And they sacked Burt six times on the day for a total loss of 57 yards. But there were moments of offense like this one. The pitch out to a young man named Andy Johnson. Second year pro. Gained 124 yards on the day and 18 rushes. This particular play, 66 yards, touchdown, New England, 21, Baltimore, 10. What a dreadful rainy day at Shea Stadium. What a dreadful, dreadful performance by the New York Jets. You're looking at Joe Namath right now. This play, typical, attempted pass, tip, picked off by Kurt Johnson, who picked off three on the day. Namath intercepted six times on the day. A one-sided game, a rout, unexpectedly. The Jets had seemed so improved, but this a disgraceful performance. And Greasy having a field day. At this point, the score 33 to nothing. Hitting Jim Mandich, the tight end, possession and control rule. That made it 40 nothing. The Dolphins enjoyed a 43 nothing rout. 
Kansas City at San Diego. The Chiefs alive after their upset victory a week earlier over Oakland. This a brilliant play action fake by Livingston. It froze the linebackers. It set up a touchdown pass to the rookie from Maryland, Waller White, whom the Steelers had dropped earlier in the season. And so Kansas City went on to win the ball game by a score of 12 to 10. <laughs> And here in Buffalo, before a packed house of 80,000, the Buffalo Bills are out in front of the Giants at halftime, 14 to 7. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the New York Giants versus the Buffalo Bills, is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury. See all our 76 cars with their new EPA mileage estimates. We are proud of them at the sign of the cat. We'll be ready for the second half kickoff between the Giants and the Bills after this word from our local stations. Buffalo over New York at halftime, 14 to 7. John Leipold set to kick off for Buffalo. 